Hi. No. <laughs> <laughs> The all-new Enthu Pro 2 from Fantex offers the flexibility and modularity to build your next system any way you can imagine. The extremely open interior space allows for up to 12 3.5 inch drives, multiple 480mm radiators, and dual systems making the Enthu Pro 2 a true workhorse for either work or play. To see the complete list of specs and to see our overview of the Enthu Pro 2, click the links in the description below. Okay, here we go. We are doing this once again where we, re we Phil and I will react to your... <laughs> But I said in our last one that we wanted to keep this sort of focused in some way, where instead of just send me random photos of your stuff and then we try and go through and pick out things, where we'll pick a theme, whether it be cleanest build or cleanest full setup or cleanest man cave, or in this instance, we are looking for systems that need the most help. And I think this one might be the most relatable, honestly, because I think the systems we're gonna see today are probably much more representative of the general, uh, owner out there, if you will, in terms of like the problems that they might see these systems as having. I predict we're going to see systems that are like really neglected, which is sort of the cringe factor, I guess, if you will. I think we're going to see setups that are just seen as needing help because they're completely just vanilla, bland. But I also think that we're going to see some people here that just don't generally follow the directions. Like, show me your system of need of help, and then they're gonna show us some super clean man cave. Um, here's the thing. The web interface for Twitter is not great. Like, Twitter is definitely more of a mobile device type of optimization in terms of the way the threading works. For some reason, the desktop doesn't show me all the responses, and it kind of puts it in an order that it feels it wants to put it in. So, if your system didn't get seen, I apologize ahead of time, but there's already like 300 replies to this in only an hour and a half or so. Last time we had 2,000 responses, so let's see if we can't get some of those early people in here, giving them the recognition they deserve. You know, I don't think this is very bad. I think, I can't tell if this is like an Alienware system. I believe it is. At least an Alienware case, it's obviously been upgraded. Honestly, this is not bad for what it is. I mean, the swing outdoors are interesting. He's got a fill tube right here. This is a T-line coming off of the pump, and he's got a fill tube, which is how we used to fill the loops back in the day before people really came up with reservoirs. Um, but I just sort of, that just caught my attention right off the start. I wanted to, to sort of say this isn't terrible. He's got his dual DVD burners here, which is exactly what Phil said he would do if he had five and a quarter bays. He would fill those with burners. See, look, the di too clean. <laughs> you like censoring it. We'll do this one. Uh, Osama Harun, o, o Rules on Twitter, basically says, here's a setup, it's an i5-8400 ASUS Strix GTX 970, 2667, eight gigs of RAM. He's asking a specific question, so that's why I'm giving him some spotlight here. He says, if you had two to $300 to upgrade, what would you do? So let's take a look at his full system here, first of all. If I had two to 300 bucks to upgrade, what would I do? So he's running an eighth, an eighth gen Intel 8400, the GTX 970. I mean, you're not gonna have enough money to upgrade your GPU and your CPU. But I feel an 8400 is definitely a little lacking for today's multi-threaded games that are finally starting to leverage, you know, clock speed and threads. But I also feel the 970 is definitely showing its age with its three and a half gigs of VRAM. I don't know, Phil, what do you think? Do you think he would get a better upgrade, let's say selling that 970 for a hundred bucks, having a $400 budget, and then maybe getting a, like a 1650 Ti? I was gonna say GPU too, but I'm kind of, I'm always kind of biased towards GPU upgrades versus CPU. They're definitely the most impactful on your games, even if you have a slightly bottlenecked CPU like he could have here. Cause I figure you, if you're not gonna get a bajillion FPS, you can make it at least make the frames look pretty. Yeah. And then you can upgrade your CPU later, so that's why Because I'm then biased. when you upgrade the CPU, the GPU gets an upgrade by proxy. Yeah, then you get more pretty frames. Yeah. yeah, I think I would take the money that you have right there, sell the 970 for anything that you can get, get yourself a 1650 Ti, or potentially even maybe a 2060. You could afford a 2060 with your budget now. Yeah, 2060. Even a 2060 Super, with if you sell the 970, and that would be your, your, your worthwhile upgrade. All right, so this is Geotherma. The raw, unfettered power of this beast, a god-level liquid-cooled i7-5960X at a 8-core 16-thread, by the way. Isn't it funny that now you can get that with like a 10-700K? <laughs> <laughs> and the piece de resistance. Piece de resistance. Piece de resistance. More, more pinky out, more fancy. 
Kiss the resistance. Dude, that is such a mid. <laughs> Oh, well, it's an Alienware. That's why it's in I that. I was like, uh, what direction it's should I It's that Alienware. Upgrade the GPU, man. I don't know if he's asking or if he's just, uh, yeah, if he's it's... just sharing. <laughs> I don't think he cares, obviously. Yeah. If he's asking for any sort of upgrade advice, uh, clearly GPU. The 660 Ti paired with a 5960X. Because you can run that 5960X at 4.6 gigs all day long, even on an AIO. As a proof, people, that Alienware is all about the aesthetics and nothing to do with the factor or the form. Wait, Hunter D3. This is such an unnecessary problem to have. God, I remember this old OCZ Fatality power supply. Do you remember these? Remember when Fatality was like relevant in video games? <laughs> hey, he was like the one of the first. Oh yeah, he was. No, he was like my first like freaking gaming idol, and then he just disappeared off the face of the planet. So this cable right here coming up and this cable coming across, he ran them this way because they're not long enough oh, to reach. Oh, I remember that problem. Because they were back in the day when like the PSUs used to be above, and so they were right. close to that. Pretty much the solution is just get a modular power supply. Cable bench, your problems are good. Do you spend money on a power supply for your FX system, or do you just start all over? <laughs> That's up to him to decide. Look, FX systems are about to be a decade old. I'm gonna preach to anyone still running an FX processor right now. Sell something, do something, go turn a trick, get Jeez. off FX. What? Was it something I said? Senior Jabin. It's a 10 year old system passed down from a family member. It's an i7 2600K. See, even that 2600K would be a better gaming CPU than the FX system we just looked at. Yeah, uh, it's so a P8Z68 board, which is always a good board for its era. Uh, Hyper 212, 16 gigs DDR3, 80 gig C drive, two, two times two terabyte hard drives, a RAID Max, RX 850 power supply. ASRock Radeon RX 570, Thermaltake Armor 890 case, which offers no cable management. Look at that RAM slots. Look at that RAM slots? Look at, shut up. Look at that RAM slots. <laughs> As if you don't misspeak. I don't. I do spoke perfectly. So I perfect. don't really have anything to offer him because Like maybe... he tried his best by bundling and trying to make a single bundle that goes upwards, but like <laughs> it's in the front because there's no backside to do it on. Then change your case. Is that your suggestion then? Yeah, honestly, this is Thermaltake. I kind of want one of these right now. I would. I want to do a retro build. So this is a uh, Dewberry Woes it, a glutton for punishment, mishmash of various parts due to income. An 8350, 16 gigs of RAM, um, Nvidia GeForce 1650, four gigabyte. The sad thing is the 1650 might be bottleneck. <laughs> 8350, if you want to know the truth. Uh, we have some FX processors. Maybe we need to just do a video. It's time to upgrade from F from FX, and here's why. Yeah, dude, I love the way he just used like the putty to like mount his wireless. I love the big SLI sticker. <laughs> Back when Nvidia cared. Yeah. Look, if anyone watching this lives in SoCal and you've got some really cool piece of vintage something I can hack up that I can buy off you, maybe message me because honestly, I'm looking to do a sleeper build and I Craigslist has not been doing much for me, but I, I would like the older the beige box, the better, honestly. This is Igor Alves says, this is my setup, three-year-old laptop that is falling apart, got from my parents to use it in college. It has seen better days. It's an i5-7200U. It's not terrible. You wanna see a terrible laptop in terms of hardware, go check out the one we just recently did. Oh God. <laughs> I bet you it's not one terabyte of the worst hard drive ever. It's just, he's dealing with spinning hard drive problems, which we've talked about a million times. You wanna make your laptop faster? Throw in a cheap SSD and watch it literally come to life. Um, I'm saving money to buy parts for a new PC. Yes, that's a zip tied power bar on the side. Oh, right here. I'm gonna give him the same advice my wife gives my kids. Finish one bottle before you open another one. Derek Wheeler, this is my old PC that my fiance now uses. Loop hasn't been maintained in quite some time outside of replacing tubing and fluid when we swapped cases to one she likes. The fluid does, I mean, it looks good though. Yeah, but you get this. Make me a sound effect for that. <laughs> <Hold on. sighs> this is unfortunately what will happen with anyone running a pastel fluid of any, but they don't realize on the water blocks here, the O-ring only goes around the outside. There's no O-ring on the inside. So you're just dealing with the, just the general friction of the acrylic top touching the base plate, which is not a seal. It's not sealed. So you get like this residue that will make its way through right there and just kind of get all etched onto the nickel right there. The nano, the nano fluids, if this is a true nano cell fluid, not something generic like thermal takes slime, is the fact that it does have weight to it. It is a, it is something that is suspended in the fluid. 
And anytime that goes through anything tight or restrictive, it does start to collect. Where it starts to collect, it starts to build up from there. It's just like literally cholesterol. And no, I'm serious. No, it I was is, gonna it say is, that exact uh, It's analogy. loop cholesterol. And what happens is it starts to stick to itself. So over time, it builds up more and more and more. And what will eventually happen here is this will eventually clog. Now, the other thing a lot of people don't realize too on these water blocks is they're not labeled inlet and outlet. However, it is recommended to have the inlet side be the part that goes down through the fins. At least if you go down and it separates, that's better in terms of restriction than having it suddenly smash together at those pins and go up. Based on the way it looks like it's sort of working its way out on the edges, I think he's going properly. But if you guys have a loop and you're running it backwards, it'll cool the same. It's just in terms of the type of fluid you're running, I feel it makes sense to have it go down through the fins, not up through the fins. That's the trade-off. I want it to be pretty. Well, you're gonna have to work for it then. And then you have to disassemble the block and use toothpaste and Crest 3D white like we do, you know, in a toothbrush. Okay, this is worth a mention. Rugal here, he says, this is my anti-crisis PC. Anti-crisis? It's a Xenon X5675, a Radeon 9 290X DC2, or direct cooling two from Asus. Chief Tech Smart Series Power <laughs> Supply. Chief Tech. He's got all this I want point. a fellow Chief Tech. <laughs> I've probably ordered one or two in my life that way. That was way? A, yeah, I was yeah. a little too... Uh, a little it was late. at 12.45 a.m. <laughs> On Sunday, total $289 for most of the parts. Okay, that already is better rigged than like anything you can get from FX at that point. I know I'm really harping on FX. <laughs> I'm on a crusade <laughs> against all the FX PCs right now. It's because I care. I want you guys to have all the performances. I, this is worth mentioning because look at this. Look at, the, look at the time he took to like literally make the ketchup and mustard Look at that, that is, that is so not terrible. There's no reason your ketchup and mustard cables have to look like crap. Hey, nice toes, bro. See, there's no reason for this. I'm about to sell this, but it needs some work. The cables are a mess and the SSD and hard drive are just sitting there. This is the equivalent of giving your car a nice wax right before you sell it, even if the paint is crap. Because shiny crappy paint looks better than dull crappy paint. And this is the equivalent of that. Mount your SSDs, use two-sided tape, and put it up in here. But you have the power supply angled the right way. The power supply, the, the only time people tend to face them up where the fan is up here is because they don't have enough clearance on the bottom to get air up through it, um, carpet, whatever. whatever. The case design, there's a lot of factors for it. But what happens is if you flip it the other way, the cables coming out of one side end up coming out then closer to the side panel rather than the back motherboard tray, and that will eat up a good six inches or so of cable length. And then like we showed earlier here, sometimes they won't reach. You have plenty of reach to not have your power supply cable for your graphics card doing a snaky tour around the inside of your case, terminating into your graphics card. You have enough room to come up through here and come back out cleanly. Same thing with your front panel connectors here. You have them, come, this is your USB 3.0 cable, I'm fairly certain. You've got it coming up, looping, and coming back down, and then into your power or to your motherboard right there. I'm assuming this case probably doesn't have an eight pin opening right here. A lot of older cases don't. That's probably fine right there. 30 minutes worth of work on this. Quite honestly, could probably get you an extra 20 to 50 bucks. I'm not kidding. You'd be surprised what the impression of what you're looking at can increase your value on something that you're selling. Because you know, as someone buying something, I'm gonna look for signs that you know about the thing that you're selling. And if you're some guy that's just like, gives me the impression that you found this in your dad's garage and you're like, I'm just selling it, man, I'm gonna lowball the hell out of you. And I'm gonna work on that lowball real hard. But if it's all put together nice and clean and you can say what's in it and you can be like, well, I did this, I know this works, here's how I cable routed it. The first time anyone mentions cable management to me, I know they're an enthusiast to some degree and it's gonna be harder for me to lowball you. And so this, literally, since you're getting ready to sell it, the cleaner you make it look, the easier it will be to sell. Because what's gonna be happening to you right now, I guarantee you, people are buying used because new is sold out and or too expensive. And with the amount of people being forced to work from home, being forced to go to school from home, you're gonna find the grandmas and the uncles and stuff out there trying to buy something for a family member that doesn't know necessarily what they're looking at. And, not, and short of ripping them off, you can get the most for your money just for your presentation. That was total salesman Jay right there. <laughs>
Bruce says, please ignore the uncleanable stuff on it because I don't know how to clean it without hurting the stuff. shit out of it. I think there are more people watching this video right now that can relate to this build than I think we'd like to admit. I was gonna say just four, go four gigs of RAM and then- Just add another stick. Yeah, but do you know how much DDR2 costs right now? Yeah, I know, because it's rare now, right? Yeah, so it's, like, it's, it's not cool worth expensive. it. It's not worth it. You know what you do? Bundle deal at Micro Center, man. Yeah. If you've got one near you, honestly, or just go find someone like selling the computer before yours. <laughs> just got my first gaming PC at 15 this week. Happy birthday, by the way. I think, I'm assuming, well, maybe it wasn't his birthday. Happy 15. Oh, a bad case led me to bad cable management. Ha <laughs> There's no such thing as bad cases for bad cable management. There's only bad imaginations. Uh, temps are okay though, forgive me, Jay. Jays? There's no disease, plural, it, or you possessive. Mean possessive? <laughs> yeah, there's more than one Jay sometimes. Like right now, look, look how many Jays there are. What does he mean, bad cable management? I see grommet there, grommet there, grommet there, grommet there, grommet there, grommet there, grommet there. Yeah, and a PSU basement where all those cables can go. And he's got some of them coming out of there. That's you win. <laughs> you want to prove you're a super fan? Not that you ever said that you are. Print this and put it in the frame. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Um, no, seriously. <laughs> this case has plenty of cable management. You just didn't. I, you you might have been too excited to get it built and play on it. I mean, you've got front panel connectors coming up through here. You've got your eight pin power coming out of right here. Why? Why is that eight pin coming out of there? You've There's literally a grommet right, right above Right here. <laughs> That. And if it'll reach from there to that hole to back, it'll reach from there to behind to up and through. You can rotate the fan 90 degrees to get the cable to come out to where you want That's it to That's what I always up. do. I always put the fan cable up here. I feel like a lot of people never kind of notice that when they build it, but yeah, you could totally yeah, rotate I the put fan. the fan. I usually put the fan cable coming out in the top right, closest to the motherboard tray. That way it can just straight shot over into the hole. Or I will then use sometimes this IO shield or the, the VRM cover yeah. to like hide the cable. And then a lot of motherboards have a plug down here or somewhere for the CPU cooler to plug in because they're not always all up there. Don't blame it on your case. The case is not the fault here. See, he has an excuse because these old cases like this yeah, they have don't zero. have, this, these are, this is like an HP type machine. You, you don't have any sort of management there. What the? <laughs> That's a radiator too. I, I. <laughs> Okay, Josh says, I got this PC for free and I was having issues with blue screen of death due to CPU temperatures greater than 95. The first photo is after cleaning. The second had 10 years of dust, which can be seen on the radiator fan. Oh, no, no, this is not dust. Dust is almost always gray. This is pet crap. Whether it be you, this person had a cat or a dog or something, that also is like, probably sticky because I have almost no doubt this person vaped or smoked yeah. or something near this computer, which is what led to it picking up so much stuff. I'd be shocked if that fan actually turned. It looks like he took it and like put it in like a sandbox and just <laughs> yeah, a sandbox made or wet it first. Cells. And then, yeah, that's the other thing. If this is dust, then that's human. Human and pet stuff. That's human skin. All right, so Hayden says it's a R7 3700X 2070 Super 16, uh, 3600 Corsair Vengeance. Cable management is rough, but would love some tips on how to fix it. Also looking to change the desk out for an Alex from Ikea. Well, you got an option here. Are you gonna fix this one or are you gonna get an Alex? Because anything <laughs> I have tell you would mostly apply to this. What cables do we have here? We have the funkiest layout power strip I think I've ever seen. It's like every direction. Yeah, which is not gonna be conducive to cleanliness. Go to... Home Depot or Lowe's, and get yourself one of those three foot long power strips. It's more of like, the, like a workshop strip. It's thin metal, it's long, and the plugs are spaced out. That way, you can screw that to the underside of your desk. Take out this slack, maybe coil it up behind there with a zip tie, and then have it nice and tight along your carpet so then this coil isn't showing. You can run one power cable to wherever this one's plugged in, which appears to be this way, uh, your shoes are in the way. Um, it appears to be plugged in over here, maybe behind this little count, this little um, drawer setup. You mount the power strip underneath the back right there, which will then allow you to plug in all of these cables underneath it and maybe closer where they need to be. So you'd have your monitor cables plugged in over here and over here. You'd have your tower plug over here. And then at least there's some arrangement to where they're going, a rhyme or reason to that. And then, the only things that look like they're coming down are the power strip, or the power plugs. That same concept I just described to you would also work for an Alex desk. 
you know, because the, the Alex, well, to be fair, the Alex has its own hideaway little door thing that pops up in the back that you can put all the cables in. And let me tell you what also sucks about the Alex is it has a hole on one side, all the way over to one side to run any of those cables through. And if you're gonna have the monitors sitting on top of the little fold up like, opening part, then it's gonna be a pain in the butt. Anytime you go to get access to that, you got to unplug the monitors, you have to take them off, and then you can open it up, arrange it, put it back. And it only has a little slit for the cables to come up through. It's literally what I just did for my daughter's setup, and I didn't like it. If I were to make a recommendation, and the Alex desk, yeah, it's a good price, like 150 bucks, I think, 140 bucks. I still am a huge fan of the two Alex drawers and then some sort of a, a top, whether it be the linen or... Is it the Krugan? Yeah. Is it the... Nobody likes the Krugan! Yeah, but anyway, it's probably gonna be twice the price of the Alex desk. So what I would recommend is make do with this based on the suggestions I just said, and then do the drawer setup with the, uh, the top. It, it's seriously, is, it's a, it's a go-to for a reason. You won't find a desk with that much storage and that much surface area for that price anywhere. I have a pre-built Dell, but my cable management is a work of art, waiting for the end of the year before I do my first PC build ever. I don't know. All right, so this is Lisa Keen. She says, my aging Xeon 5675 running 4.2 gigs. Wow, that's a fast Xeon. Uh, scores around 2000 in Cinebench R20. Still kicking. Dude. <laughs> 48 gigs of DDR3 with the Radeon RX 5, uh, 5700 XT. It's only been used as a photography and video editing rig which is why she has as much RAM as she does, uh, runs as a Hackintosh. It runs rock solid, but I've been thinking about getting a Ryzen 3600X. The RAM slots being all filled like that is just so it's glorious. Awesome. So th this is an Antec P182 case, if I'm not mistaken. I believe it's a P182. It might be the one that was below that. I actually did a build very similar to this um, way back in the day where it was not built for water cooling, but I made it work for water cooling with a Dremel. And then I used uh, obviously spray paint and stuff to make it how I wanted. So what I did was I cut another 120 fan hole up top right here. And then I put the radiator mounted outside of the case with pass through uh, barbs and then came through here and I had, a wa I had the water cooled. Um, no, it was an 8800 Ultra. It was not water cooled, but then I had the reservoir sitting over here. I'll have Phil put up a picture of it. Just to kind of give you an idea of how a case, just because it doesn't natively support something doesn't mean you can't modify it to support something simply or simply, easily, there. She says this system needs help. I don't know, Phil. I don't really feel like it's got a problem, do you? Yeah, no, I mean, besides the rad being lower than the pump, that's the way. And that seems like an easy fix if there's another fan slot above it, right? Well, yeah, she could have just put it right there and made it hang. So or, again- Or like just up, straight up one <laughs> on the front, right? No, there's no fan hole. Oh, there isn't one. a fan hole. Okay, so that's why it's there. Yeah, but she could have mounted it here. It would have fit right here. Zachary French, I just wanted some suggestions on tube setup. Let's start with having enough of it because you went rigid everywhere except here. I have a theory, because these are these are Primo Chill fittings, they're the revolver fittings. I have a theory, you got one tube or one box of tubing which has six tubes in it. And with the length of your runs here, given the, the, the length of the tubes, which are usually a meter and a half, I have a theory that Every time you got one of these 90s wrong, it was just a whole tube chucked because you couldn't reuse it and you ran out, which is why you're using soft tubing between your rad and your res. Cause you've got obviously, is that a water, is that water falling? Anyway, the return tube should always have a tube forcing it down so you don't get a waterfall effect. Otherwise it's gonna sound like an aquarium unless you like that sound, I guess. So get more tubes. First of all, if whatever you think you need for your build, get twice as much at least. It's not that expensive. Use your bad bends as a guide for your new bend. You know right here, this piece is too wide, which is why you're coming off at this weird angle like that. So I would bend this 91st and then I would use this piece, the old one, as a, as a template for where I should bend the next piece. And then I would, I would say, okay, if it's bending here, bend it back there and use this guide next to it so you can kind of get that point of reference. My other suggestion too is if you find the hard line, hard line was too hard, <laughs> then just soft tube it everywhere. People give us a hard time still to this day because I went soft tubing on Phil's editing rig. It looks great and it's easily worked on. 
because we can move up, we can unbolt apart and move it out of the way and get access to the CPU or whatever, having to drain the full loop. Anyway, <laughs> there we go, guys. Thanks for sharing so many of your builds. And it went exactly as I expected. This is definitely like average PC day because I feel like so many of these builds were fell into that vanilla category. Um, you'd be surprised what just some, some cable extensions would do in terms of cleaning things up and making them look more nice. Um, and cable management. It's going to be repeated every single time we do these videos. Cable management makes or breaks the setup. And then some of these setups here were, didn't even qualify. They were far too nice. So people, like I said, didn't read the, the actual tweet and just sent me pictures of their setup. And we tried not to show those because they didn't apply. What do you guys think we should do next? Super clean systems that are goals or what? Those are always inspiring. And let's face it, they serve two purposes. You go, man, that looks so nice. And you go, oh man, when you look at your own. <laughs> oh. anyway. Maybe it'll inspire you to do your cable management stuff. Yeah, because, you know, well, that's a test bench. It's okay to look yeah. at that. Yeah, <laughs> always ignore that. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. Cool, next cut. Manage your cable.